Right. In this video, uh, this is number 31 in the mathematics of test one. Um, so this question is asked you about a cubic function. Uh, of the form of a vec is equal to x cubed plus z3. And I said plus c, not plus c. Uh, and so it wants to know it has one zero. Uh, it lets you know that it has one zero at x equals, let's see, x equals um, 1 plus i square roots of 3. Okay, and it wants to, you to find a couple of things. So it wants you to find uh, the cubic function. And then let's get to that. So those are the two things that we have to accomplish in this um, in this video. Okay. Uh, so the first one is uh, so there's a couple of things that are happening here, kind of behind the scenes, or things that um, we need to maybe make connections to in order to solve this problem successfully. So the first one is is that the fundamental theorem of algebra, Fermi's algebra says that um, every polynomial has as many roots as uh, the leading degree or the highest degree. So FTV guarantees that we have uh, three solutions to this problem. Okay. In other words, there are three three roots. They may not all be real, but they are there are three of them. Okay. Another thing is to notice about the tail behavior. Since the tail behavior of a polynomial. Since this is an odd polynomial, uh, odd polynomials do one of two things. Either the tails the ends of the functions look like this, where one's going to positive infinity and one's going to negative infinity, or the tails do this, where one is going to positive infinity on the left and one's going to negative infinity on the right. So there's they're going to do one or the other. If the leading coefficient is positive, if the leading coefficient leading coefficient is positive, it's doing this. If the leading coefficient is negative, it's doing something like this. And that's true for any odd uh, odd number being the highest degree. Okay. The other thing is, is that since it's a polynomial, you know it's continuous. And so you know that it always has at least one real solution. And in other words, um, because the endpoints are going to positive and negative infinity, the intermediate value theorem says that there is a value that the function has to go through y equals zero. Okay. So we know it has at least one real solution. Whether it has two or more uh, real solutions just depends on the nature of the, the formula. Now, this one says it has uh, one solution that's imaginary. Okay, so another thing to note is that um, imaginary solutions always occur in pairs. Specifically, they're conjugates. So we actually have two real so two solutions of this problem we already given. Even though they only gave us one, we know that x equals one plus or minus i square roots of three are our two solutions to the problem. Okay. So the remaining solution, the one that we're looking for, is actually the only real solution. So uh, we have something that looks like this, right? Uh, where we have the one tail going to negative infinity and the, and the other tail going to positive infinity because the leading coefficient is a positive one. And we're looking for the one real intercept where it crosses the x axis. Okay. So uh, to be to do that, all we need to do is plug in the best solution here. And since we know that the, the x equals 1 plus i square root of 3 is a solution, we know that f of x is equal to 0. So if we're going to plug in this root, we've got to figure out and determine what the constant value of c must be in order to solve this problem. Okay. So that's basically what this problem is about, um, with this little bit of background information kind of floating in there. So I'm going to plug in f of 1 plus i square root of 3 into the formula. So um, x is 1 plus i square root of 3. And I'm going to cube that plus the constant term c. And that's going to equal 0 since this is a solution of the f of x. Okay. Uh, so the little bit of algebra we have to do is, is to uh, multiply this out. Um, so I usually like to do this in steps just to kind of avoid um, as many mistakes as possible. 
Okay, so I'm, this is what I'm doing. And what I'm going to first do is multiply this two binomials to get a uh, to get a binomial, to get a trinomial, and then I'll I'll then multiply that trinomial into this third factor. Okay. So uh one times one here, that's gonna be one square. And then I have one times i square root of three. And I have this term that I'm multiplying and this term that I'm multiplying. So uh I know it looks like I'm foiling, but really all I'm doing is distributing this term, this one plus i square root of three into this term, the one. So I have to multiply each of these terms by one and I'm multiplying this term into this term. Okay. So if I do that, I have one plus i square root of three. This first term is coming from here. And then um, what do I have left over? I have one times one is one. I have one times i square root of three so plus i square root of three plus I have x squared to 3 times 1, so i squared root to 3. And plus, I have i squared to 3 times i squared to 3, plus i squared times the square root of 3 squared. Now, i squared is negative 1. So if we kind of simplify this a little bit, this is negative 1. And this is the square root of 3 squared, so this is going to be negative 1 times 3. Or this comes out to be negative 3. Negative 3 plus a positive 1 makes this whole value a negative 2 plus 2i square root of 3. Okay, so that's the result of multiplying that out. And I have to multiply that by i square root of 3 here. Okay. So just like before, I'm going to distribute this quantity into here. And then uh, I'm going to multiply this quantity into here. Okay. And so uh, I'm going to take this whole term, multiply it here, and take this whole term, and multiply it there. Okay. So the nice thing is, since this is one, I really just am rewriting this whole thing. Okay. So kind of working backwards and call that that. Uh, I'm going to have negative two plus two i square root of three. And again, that's coming from this whole thing being multiplied by one. So it's not anything I can just rewrite that. Plus, and now I have a little bit of work to do. I have negative two times uh, i square root of three. So that's going to be minus. 2i square root of 3. That's this, that's these two being multiplied together. And then i square root of 3 times 2i square root of 3. Well, I have a 2 times an i squared. So plus 2i squared times 3. The 3 coming from the square root of 3 being squared. Okay. All right. So simplifying all of this now, um, I see that the that this term here is going to cancel with this term here. So those cancel out. And then this is 2 times i squared. Well, i squared is negative 1. And the square root of 3 squared is 3. So this is 2 times 3. And it's negative. So this is negative 6 minus 2. So our final result then is negative 2 minus 6, which is minus 8. Um, so that's just the result of all of this. Okay. Simplifies into a minus 8. All right. So now going back up to, <laughs> kind of losing track of what we did here. Let's go back up to our, our result here. So plugging this in, this i plus i cubed, uh, square root of 3 cubed, turns out to equal just negative 8. Okay, so bringing this equation down, I have f of 1 plus i square root of 3 is equal to negative 8 plus c, which equals 0. Okay, so what do we add to negative 8 to make it equal 0? Well, that means that c has to equal, c has to equal positive 8. Okay, so uh, we can plug that back in, and so we can write that f of x is really equal to x cubed plus 8. Okay, and if we wanted to find out what the real root actually was, this would be an easy calculation. We can just set f of x equal to 0, and that would give us then that x cubed equals negative 8, which implies that x uh, is equal to negative 2 is the is the real root. Uh, not that we need to know that, but just in case you're curious. Um, and then the two imaginary solutions are the ones that are right here. Okay, so now that we have that part, let's go ahead and sketch the graph. 